So when I um, when I think about uh, the job of being a salesperson, and there's so much great work out there, you know, Dan Pink's book "To Sell as Human," great great piece that really speaks to the fact that we're all salespeople, whether we're teachers or we're actually salespeople for a living, or we're we're business leaders or uh, community leaders. We're selling. We're selling ideas. We're trying to motivate others to take action. We're all salespeople, as uh, Dan would argue, and I think he's right. And one of the things we've seen from great salespeople um, is that they are able to take rejection and kind of roll with the punches, right? Uh, they don't take it personally. And that is, um, that is a, a unique attribute uh, of salespeople, but it is something that can be learned. And, and one of the things, and it's hard, right? It's hard to, to come into a sales job where you are going to experience a lot of rejection, a lot more rejection than acceptance, right? If you just look at it statistically, a great salesperson's not gonna convert at 100%. They're gonna convert well south of that, which means, 70 to 90% of the time, they're hearing no. They're hearing, no, I don't want to spend time with you. No, I don't want to buy what you're selling. Uh, no, we like your competitors instead. We're doing business with them. You know, one of the things I always tell salespeople to try to, it's, it's important to not say, um, turn a deaf ear or ignore that no, because it's important to understand why, right? If we think about, uh, no, I don't want to spend time with you, um, or no, I don't buy what you're saying, is it that the insight we're trying to use to capture that customer's attention or the story we're trying to tell in the sales meeting needs work? Maybe the, the insight itself is not resonating. Maybe we're not doing a great job telling that story or customizing to that, it to that customer. So it's important that you actually hear no and that you learn from it. But it's also important that you don't take it personally because oftentimes um, customers say no for lots of reasons. They say, no, we don't have any budget. No, we don't see any value. No, we're in execution mode. We're not, we're not going to move forward. And it's important that we don't see that as a reflection uh, on us personally, but it's also important that we see it as a reflection of the fact that maybe the thing we're teaching them, the insight we're bringing the table, isn't that compelling or provocative. It's not worth their time. Maybe it's a reflection of the fact that we haven't really learned to tell that story in a compelling way. And there's things we can do maybe with our manager or things we can practice uh, in a safe place back in the home office to get ready for the next sales conversation that we can really make that story resonate in a powerful way for that customer. Maybe they're saying no because what we're trying to sell ultimately is not that unique or valuable or credible to the client. And that's insight we've got to take back to the organization. It, it's important therefore to kind of really differentiate what's personal and uh, distinguish that from what's professional uh, and what's about the company, right? Um, it's great to hear no so we understand how to get better uh, it's great to hear no so that we understand uh, what feedback we can take back to our organization, whether that's marketing, hey, we need help really sharpening this insight, or it's product, gosh, our competitors are kicking our butts out in the marketplace because their product does X, Y, and Z, and ours doesn't. And we really need to add this functionality if we want to be competitive. Um, the no, I find, is almost never personal for a salesperson. It's typically a reflection of um, a lack of insight, a lack of um, compelling delivery of that insight, or lack of product or service capability, right? It's not about you as a person. Uh, it's typically about, um, about what you're there to say or how you're saying it, what you're there to sell or how you're selling it uh, in the eyes of the customer. But you're gonna hear no a lot as a salesperson and you're not gonna get very far in sales unless you get comfortable with that and really separate it out uh, from, the again, the personal versus the professional no, uh, if you will, and learn from those no's uh, to get better over time. So when I think about this uh, idea of uh, how sales and what, and what can we learn from salespeople, the best salespeople, where we look at and they get told no 90% of the time, um, and how they're able to separate that from, uh, again, the professional versus the personal. I'm not taking this personally, but it doesn't mean I'm not learning from it. It doesn't mean I'm not sharpening my message. It doesn't mean I'm not sharpening my technique. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to take those insights, those rejections, back to the home office and try to pattern recognize. What are we hearing from customers? Why are they saying no that we as a company can learn from? Now, what does that mean for the rest of us, right? As we, we talked about before, we're all in the job of selling at some level. And I think that when we hear no, when we see an audience, when we see other people reject our message, let's say I'm a teacher and I'm trying to compel a group of students to, um, to embrace a topic uh, or to um, uh, pursue a project with passion and uh, with excitement, and it's just not working. They're, they're saying no, they're rejecting my message. There's a lot of stuff we can learn about that. Is it what we're saying? Is it how we're saying it? How do I break through the, to that individual? How do I customize my message? How do I sharpen that, uh, that teaching or that insight? Um, how do I make the thing that I'm ultimately trying to get them to do or to buy more compelling? 
right? There's a lot we can learn about this. How do we pitch things? How do I pitch my boss on giving me a raise? How do I get my students to actually um, uh, do the work that, um, that I need them to do, that I need them to get excited about? How do I get my kids to take out the garbage? That might be a uh, <laughs> that might be a tough one, but we're all selling, right? And there's a lot we can learn from when the customer says no. You know, one of the things we uh, or the recipient says no, the the counterparty. One of the things we always say in um, in sales, you know, customers will will often say uh, they'll use a budget as an excuse. They'll say no, I don't have the budget to buy your solution or your product. And salespeople hear this all the time. What uh, one of the best salespeople I ever worked with, uh, true insight seller, told me is. Budget is never the reason. It is never the reason. If your insight is sharp enough, it's, if it's delivered in a compelling enough way, and if what you're selling really does address an unseen opportunity that is going to change the way the client does business, they'll find the budget for it, even if there's no budget allocated. So when the customer tells you no because it's budget, they're throwing up a smoke screen. You got to push harder and you got to ask the really hard questions to really dig deep because ultimately it probably does come back to what you're saying how you're saying it, what you're ultimately trying to get them to do. And that's true as well, right? When we're communicating messages to others, to our boss, to our students, to our kids, uh, when we think about their, their smokescreen answers, their generic answers, I'm too busy, I'm not interested, et cetera. Let's ask ourselves those questions. Let's be introspective and understand, you know, is it what we're trying to get them to do? And I haven't really sharpened the edge of that, why it's worth doing? Or is it the way I'm delivering it? And what can I learn from that rejection uh, to sharpen the way I tell that story, to sharpen the way I, I message that uh, to the other side moving forward?